I'm uh, Callum from Pop Culture Patter. Ah, yeah, and my name's Barry, and I'm from Wolfman's Got Nards, and we're doing a little collaboration today. Yep. Callum's obviously got his own channel on YouTube, and I've got my, mine as well. I'm going to be talking about Halloween today, which Callum will discuss with us just now. And we'll be both uploading our videos to both our channels. They might be slightly different as well, so hopefully, mm. if you enjoy them, you can watch them on both channels. Yep. Um, so we're going to be talking about David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy and how we would fix it because while we both like David Gordon Green's trilogy, um, there's little fixes that we feel and stuff that we could that could be removed to make it overall a much better um, piece of work that we would enjoy as fans. Yeah, and I think the reason we're doing it is it's okay us doing it the way we're doing it is because we're doing it in hindsight. There's things that I'm sure David Gordon Green would love to change if he watches it back restrictions, COVID, mm -hmm. that they had issues with for filming kills and ends, etc. So there's so many things that they had to do based on the limitations that they had at the time. But going back, I'm sure they would probably do similar things to us, maybe completely different. Maybe they're happy yeah. with the outcome that they had. But certainly I'm sure that everyone would agree that the trilogy is not perfect. Yeah. And with the tweaks that we would personally make, mm -hmm. To us, yeah. they would probably be better. Yeah. So we're going to look at the trilogy as a whole. And the only rule is that the changes that we make have to flow in with the trilogy um, that's that we're creating. So the changes, we can't change stuff um, that doesn't impact another film. That all has to flow in the one. Yeah. So like I said to Callum before, if you're going to kill off Laurie Strode in your idea, which we won't do, <laughs> if you kill off Laurie in 2018, then that obviously has a ripple effect and an impact on Kills and Ends. You can't include her. So mm -hmm. any um, interactions that she had in Kills and Ends with people would obviously be affected by that. So yeah, we won't be too drastic. And we also can add characters in I think that's a good way to do it. We have to stick with what we've got, yeah. but we can change certain things. We just can't like drop somebody in from the past. Yeah, so we we can't we can't add. We've sort of we can remove characters. Yeah, that would help, but we can't say. Do you know what? Let's just add in Doctor Wynn. Yeah, that's going to help. Or let's add in somebody from the previous Halloween film that's not been included before. That would be a little bit of a cheat. Yeah. Because we were dad and Dr. Loomis, uh, <laughs> yeah. 105 years old. <laughs> Do you want to just go for it from 2018? Yeah, we'll structure that way. Like, we'll, we'll try our best to stick from beginning to the end, mm -hmm. but we will venture off going back and forward because it's only natural to do so because it changes yeah. things. Do you way. want to talk about um, the bits that we didn't like from each film and I would then say, what we would change? Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. probably the best way to structure it, I would say. Cool. We'll start with 2018. What are your issues with that film in particular? It's funny because I've always championed the idea of them not being related anymore, mm -hmm. right? So strap yourself in. But <laughs> there's something inside of me that would have liked to have seen them being brother and sister. Right. Um, or at the very least, Michael believing that they're brother and sister and Laurie knowing that they're not brother and sister. And that gives Michael a reason to go after Laurie Strode because I know he doesn't really technically go after her. Mm -hmm. It's Sartain that yeah. makes that happen, which we'll discuss. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's, it felt too forced bringing them together in this one because they sacrificed the brother and sister aspect. Yeah. So the idea was good on paper, but I think execution-wise, mm. they could have just made them brother and sister. Yeah, uh, it wasn't hugely necessary um, mm -hmm. to to remove that. But we we talked earlier. We both liked either way. It was it, it worked yeah, either way uh, as well. It would work both ways. Yeah. Um, so, were any in particular the issues specifically? Because mine's is very detailed about like for me, Sartain. Yeah, I just wouldn't have that arc because it didn't really serve the story as a whole mm -hmm. uh, it was also a bit unbelievable that a psychiatric doctor who's had looks at, at least 60 years in the profession i don't know how old he is but he looked yeah. old um, yeah, yeah, it's 60 uh, so if he's had all that experience and worked under dr loomis do we believe he really wants to become a killer himself just to learn how it feels. Yeah, that's it's too unrealistic. For a film that's supposed to be more grounded than the previous films, yeah, I think that was way too over the top. And it's almost like David Gordon Green realised that as they were filming. You know, when he put the mask on yeah. and then he took it off and he died, you're like, 
that was weird. Yeah. Like, I didn't want that to happen or continue. Thankfully, it only lasted a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. But why? Uh, I mean, that, that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in a Halloween film. Yeah, and you know, when you were talking about your videos of your 10 worst and 10 best, that mm -hmm. was definitely in my top two of yeah. worst <laughs> and, and a franchise full of a lot of bad moments. Mm -hmm. That is for me, when I watched that in the cinema, I thought, fucking hell. Yeah, that was questionable. Yeah, um, so that would change for me. I would still have him get on the bus and get shot by the kid um, as just a way to get him out of the picture. Yeah. Um, and you can understand him wanting to see his, his patient through the next place. And if the bus crashes, you know, he can't do that. Yeah. That takes his arc out of the, the way. And I don't know if you bring him ever back in any of the others. I certainly wouldn't bring him nah. back, but um, that was a closed book for me. But in saying that, though, we might have liked him more if he didn't do what he'd done. So, like, if the bus crashes... We maybe feel sorry for him. Oh, it's a it's a shame, Doctor Sartain. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah. Maybe we'll see him in a future film. Uh -huh. Maybe. But then because he survived and because he's done what he'd done later on, you're like, get him out of here. He's yeah. awful. I get the feeling they just liked his look, and they thought, right, I quite like this guy's look. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be bad, could be good. Well, I said to this, I said this to you before, and I don't know if you want to talk about it yet, but he's obviously the new Loomis, that's what Laurie calls him. Yeah. But for me, the new Loomis, for me, randomly, was Aaron, yep. who was one of the podcasters, and if you want to talk about that the now, yeah, yeah. yeah um, Aaron is something that I would change, and the fact that he didn't die, mm -hmm. I always wanted Aaron to come back. Now, it, it didn't confirm that he died yep. at, the end of, uh, uh, at the end of his scene, oh. so they could easily have brought him back. But I wouldn't have killed off Aaron, whether he died or not. I wouldn't have killed him off, and I certainly would have brought him back, and he could have been that new, because he's British. Mm -hmm. I know that not every British person needs to be Dr. Loomis, but <laughs> yeah. it's the sound of Aaron is, has got a familiar familiarity. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's very familiar um, <laughs> to Dr. Loomis and the fact that he sounds like him. Yeah. Um, and I thought I was going to hate Aaron from the trailers uh, and Dana, but I didn't. I loved them. And mm. I thought they shouldn't have died, especially Aaron. Yeah. I, Dana, for me, I think to move the story along, it was fine for her to die. And that gives Aaron another thing to be like, to be alive for and want to make sure that this doesn't happen to other people. You know, it mm. gives him another arc. You could always have him going to the drink after dealing with yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, seeing... I don't know if there were love interests, certainly in the outtakes there was something shot that they were in a motel room and yeah, that was where... a deleted scene where he jumps into the shower with the yeah, mask on. Yeah, so they didn't really allude to the fact that they were lovers or anything like that, but... And that may have been a bit forced, I don't know. Yeah, but maybe that's why they removed that scene like, where they were together -ish. Yeah. Uh, it kind of... They don't need that in there, so... Uh-huh. And in terms of, as a whole, 2018 doesn't need a lot of work... I don't think. I don't think so either. I, I think I watched it, rewatched it the other night, and I thought this is a good movie. If we took the Sartain thing out of it, little tweaks and changes here and there, it would be pretty solid. Yeah. You know, I um, would say so. Yeah, but even down to the characters, yeah. um, everyone was a good character apart from Sartain, which yeah. he was good to begin with. Yeah, yeah, and he just veered off. But even to the smaller characters um, like Ray. Uh -huh. Alison's dad yep. uh, I, I know that people hate this scene where he says I've got peanut butter all over my penis <laughs> yeah. people think that that's weird to say in front of your daughter your teenage daughter or your kid or whatever yeah. and they don't think it fits into a Halloween film whereas for me I've got kids and I would say everything I could to embarrass my kid because yeah. that's what you do as a parent so I think what he'd done there was very realistic and that's what I liked about the David Gordon Green's characters is everyone felt realistic Yeah, you know down to Ray to Alison, Cameron, maybe yeah. Oscar was a wee bit over the top. Yeah. But he was still one of those kids that you get in school that you, they were just annoying. Absolutely, and yeah. So realistic in that sense. And that's one thing, as a whole, David Gordon Green's characters were all amazing. Mm -hmm. I wanted more time with them. Yeah. I cared about them, you know, apart from Sartain. But like, nine times out of ten, the characters were always spot on and, mm -hmm. and you wanted to be with them on this journey. But... Yeah, I, I would have liked to see a bit more of Dave. Um, I think uh, Dave was, for me, there was just more to do with him. And I felt killing him off camera, while it looked cool when um, Hawkins is investigating yeah. the house, I just kind of thought it was a bit of a waste. Um, 
But well, that's and, a good thing because you liked him so much and him dying and it was a waste. You're like, we could have seen more of it. And if you did want to kill him, give us a detailed kill of it yeah, happening, you know? I know. But, uh, and that kind of seemed to be David Gordon Green's thing is the likeable characters all kind of died Vicky. and met their demise. Yeah. You know, the babysitter, Vicky, she was great. Yeah. I loved her as well. So I think most people who died, apart from Sartain, yeah. most people who died in the the movie, I was disappointed in them dying yeah. because I liked them. Yeah. I suppose that's a good thing. Yeah, that's, that's a, what a, you that's want. A positive, yeah. In terms of 2018, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm just trying to see if I've... I do have anything else that's on my notes. Um, well, oh, I we think we both had the same so like, we, moment. <laughs> I bet we haven't, but let's go try it. <laughs> For me, I would love to see Laurie cause the bus yes, crash. the bus crash. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I, I, say, yeah. uh, I, I would love to see her involved in that way with her drinking and heading towards wanting to see Michael off. She thinks, right, I've got a moment to kill him, I'm going to do something reckless. That's where she's at in her head. Mm. Um, and then Michael gets away somehow. But I would love it if Michael was in the woods watching Laurie trying to find him. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. And then you could have the scene where the young boy and his dad comes in mm -hmm. and that's how Michael gets the car. Yeah. Because Laurie just flees straight after that yeah. and heads straight to the restaurant. That could easily be edited in. Yeah. Easily. Aye. That would be so cool if Michael's like standing in the shadows, mm. kind of watching her from afar. And you don't see him because he's not got the mask at this point. Yeah. So all you see is the shape. Yeah. Oh, the shape. Oh. Um, and she's like, when she goes to the restaurant, that could still be the same because she's like, I saw him, the shape. Where did you see him? You saw him in the woods. You know, like she, yeah. she ran away and she's like, what have I done here? I've caused the bus crash and now he's escaped. All the material's there. Yeah. You just need to add that that scene in and yeah. it's done. It's brilliant. And Karen can be like, oh, she's a fucking drunk. Ah, she always does this. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, but still play it the same way yeah. as she played it. Exactly the same. Um, I would have Lonnie at that dinner table as well. Yeah. Beside Cameron, as in like the two families getting together. Mm -hmm. I would have him as a single dad. Um, and that's a wee bit back and forth between Ray and Lonnie. I think that would be good character development for the two of them. And that's our introduction to Lonnie. It wouldn't feel as forced as bringing him into kills. I'm like, well, where were you in Halloween 2018 when your son was there? Yeah. You know, obviously we're, we're talking in hindsight. Yeah, yes. You know, so uh, everything in this is hindsight. Yes. Yeah, so no, no, what we know. Obviously they didn't know that back then. So having Lonnie at the dinner table introduces us to Lonnie's character mm -hmm. so that when we see him in Halloween Kills, we're like, there's Lonnie yeah. from the dinner table. Yep. And we knew, we know him from 78 as mm -hmm. well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Another character that I would throw in would be Corey in 2018. Yep. I would have him at high school with Alison, Cameron and Oscar and, and just be that kind of lonely geeky kind of kid that is getting bullied and you could probably have Cameron and, and Oscar, Oscar doing that yeah. doing that makes give uh, Cameron the Steve Harrington Stranger Things yeah. arc where he's a fucking dick and you don't want to like him and then he just becomes lovable throughout and, and keep him and have that arc but in 2018 have him kind of bullying Corey so that we're introduced to Corey at that stage mm -hmm. and it's not so forced um, and it's, it just looks like you're making Cameron look like a bully. You're not actually introducing a character, yeah. you know. Um, so I would I would have that as a wee slight change, and yeah. then Alison helping Corey up with the books. And Alison's the only person that's nice to Corey. Yeah, so that would make, I guess I'm at that connection with her. Yeah. Now, personally, for me, um, as much as I like that idea, and I would run with that idea mm -hmm. if we're keeping Corey there. Yeah. But. My idea with Corey is completely different in Halloween Ends, which is why we'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah. But if we've got Corey as a character, that's the best time to do it. Bring yeah. him into 2018 yeah. for definite. But I'll, I'll talk more of that soon. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and Hawkins, for me, I would have in 2018 the start with the flashback. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a good way to be like, right, the last film we saw was 78. Michael disappeared. We're all like, where the fuck has he gone? But you get caught up by, he got arrested. Um, that's a good flashback. It gets everybody introduced to the world again, Haddonfield, it looks great. Mm -hmm. we, all, we all say, uh, I don't think there's anybody that said the flashback looked terrible. It's, yeah, it's the best thing everybody's yeah. saying, you know. Um, and have that be the introduction and then lead into what they're doing now. So go into uh, 
Michael at Smith's Grove, have that the same and have uh, Aaron and Dana go to meet Laurie. I think that was very, very good to catch you up to the characters. Mm -hmm. um, but have the flashback in there just to kind of be like, so that you can have flashbacks at other times. Well, that also, having the flashback to begin with would also give us a good introduction to Hawkins. Yeah. You know, as a young guy saying, oh, okay, so who's this guy? Okay, his name's Hawkins. And now we see Will Patton yeah. as the older Hawkins. So now, even though we've only got a 10 minute intro, uh -huh. we, we already know. We already uh -huh. know why he's there. Yeah. Whereas we're finding that out in Kills mm -hmm. instead of 18. And that's what I thought, when you meet Hawkins for the first time, you think, I should know this guy. Yeah, because he seems like a really decent, prominent guy yeah. in, the, in the franchise. And I was always thinking, was he a part of the franchise before? I don't remember him. I don't think so. We didn't really have him in it. And I was kind of thinking, the way it was shot, when he's like playing the pinball and it just kind of cuts him mm -hmm. and you see him and I'm like, this is a reveal. Whereas that would have paid off if yeah. you had the flashback at the start of the film. I think it's also because Laurie knows him. It's mm. almost like because Laurie knows him, we're supposed to know him. Yeah. You know, but we don't. But I felt like I did know him mm -hmm. because he was so, he had a lot of screen presence. Yeah. And I loved him. Mm -hmm. So I already automatically thought, I, I know this guy, even though I didn't. Yeah, so, he's a great character actor. Yeah, um, yes. Uh, so yeah, I would have that happen. And I would also, we have to think about the change between if we're taking Sartain out of it, how do we get Hawkins injured so that he's out of the way till kills? And how do we get Michael to Laurie's house? Do we keep Hawkins out of the way though? You know, we've just confirmed that we don't like Sartain. Yeah. And we love Hawkins. Mm. More Hawkins would be better for me. Yeah, true. Um, if you still want to injure him, that's fine. He can get injured yeah, anyway, really, you know. Yeah. Not injured to the point where he's almost dead. Because I always thought it was weird that when Hawkins goes into the house that um, the babysitters were killed at, um, the blonde girl. Yeah, Vicky. Vicky. Michael just walked straight by him. And that, that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. I was like, Michael would have killed him when yeah. he stood. Like, if that was the old Michael, but like, he just walked by him. Maybe it was the Buster Rhymes Michael. <laughs> <laughs> he gets told what to do. <laughs> but yeah, that could. It, no, you couldn't injure him then. But I like the fact in Kills that, that Laurie and Hawkins are both in the hospital together mm. and they're both recovering together and that forms yeah. that bond. So uh, I think yeah. that needed that. So we need to injure him somehow. So maybe an altercation with Michael. Could be like you just said, when he walked past him, give him a kick to the knee or something and yeah. he's hurt himself. Or just stab him yeah. somewhere that you, could, you would survive, but mm -hmm. puts him out of the game. Yep. Um, and then how do we get Michael to Laurie's house for the finale? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's when the brother-sister aspect comes in again for me. Yeah. You know, because of the way it played out, Sartain was the instrument for that. Yeah. And he took him there, almost held his hand yeah. because he doesn't know Laurie. But then if we still make it either Laurie and Michael are brother and sister, or like I said, Michael still believes that that's his sister. Yeah. Then like, not that he believes it's his sister, that's because it reminds him of um, Judith Myers. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you, I, I've not got you out of my head because you remind me of my sister. Yeah. And that's why he remembers Laurie, not because he attacked her, but because she always reminds him of Judith, yeah. so in his head he believes you're my sister, so I'm going after you. So we don't need anyone to take him there. That's true. He just goes there. Um, or we could have Alison, because Alison's part of that journey, right? Alison goes, through, goes through the woods. Yeah, so he follows her through the woods maybe. And that, you know that creepy scene where all the bodies that... Um, the mannequins The mannequins, stuff, yeah. yeah. Could have him standing there and she gets a fright and like he's chasing her and just build a bit more intensity. Yeah. Alison gets into the house goes under again with Karen in the bunker and then the the, the rest of it plays out the same way. Yeah. You just need to get Michael to Laurie, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but he could be chasing Alison. That, that could all, be a way. All that could be added in from footage we've already got again. Yeah. And they've got some deleted and uh, extended scenes where she's running through the woods with the mannequins and stuff. There's some extended scenes with that. Mm -hmm. Just use that. Yeah. And, and that could be used to push the story forward rather than giving us the, the Sartain yeah. thing. 
Easy. And I think that's 2018. I don't think we would change too much about no, the end. And I, I think that was... Again, the things that we would change is not drastic. No. You know, there might be some drastic things in kills and ends, but for this one, it's more of a, what's your taste? Yeah. And how you want it to play out. And like we said, the footage that they've got already could be changed and chopped to go with what we're saying. Yeah, so basically what we're asking is if there's anybody <laughs> that fancies themselves as an editor out there, once we've finished recording this take all the films together and piece them together for us we'll I make a, a, a Barry and uh, Callum cut yeah. easy well, I did do my Corey cut for oh, yeah. Halloween Ends taking out all of Michael Aye. and keeping Corey Aye. and I've done it the other way around taking out all the Corey and putting in all the Michael that'd be a short movie but we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah we are we yeah. are so yeah I loved the scene I spoke about earlier one of my favourite scenes in the entire franchise is actually Laurie hunting through the house for Michael once she shot his hand mm -hmm. um, and closing all the doors. I thought that was super intense. I remember the feeling like it was yesterday in the cinema experiencing that. I thought, I've not felt this intense probably since I watched the first Halloween. Yeah. You know, I, Michael could pop out at any time and I would get a fright. Um, and I hadn't really felt that in any horror movies after that. So it was a real cool moment for me. But I wouldn't change anything to do with that ending. Um, I, f I think the the fight went for as long as it needed to. Mm -hmm. um, the ending was great with um, Michael being in the bunker. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought there's not much to change there. So exactly, and they, and they left it even though it looks like he was dying. They still left it uh, very ambiguous. Where yeah. did he die? Did they not die? And then the breathing at the end. You heard yeah. the breathing at the end. They get end credits. So yeah, I think it was a good ending that I probably wouldn't change. In fact, they changed the ending yeah. because he was obviously in the woods yeah, and he yeah. was dying out on the tree. So they changed it to the ending that we probably would have kept. Yeah. So they done the right thing. I Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I think there would have been something cool in seeing Michael up against a tree, old man Logan style, yeah. like bleeding out and just being like the breathing just getting slower and slower and slower and then it just stops. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been cool, but maybe that could have been for another movie yeah. since we've got that great ending already. It's like, I don't know if you said it on, on air, but like you said, when he's looking at Laurie and the girls mm. up at them as the flames are going by, that's epic. Yeah. You know, it's so good. Uh, there's not been a moment like that for many films that have uh, have been like, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. You feel sorry for him. He's the puppy dog eyes. Mm -hmm. I know he's not got puppy dog eyes, uh, but you look at his mask. eyes. The yeah. devil's eyes. <laughs> it, 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 it just takes you by surprise because you almost feel sorry. As soon as he's been trapped, he's looking up at being like, oh. Uh, and he's also kind of like, touche, you've caught me. Uh, and why? Why are you but doing this to me? <laughs> look at so much emotion uh -huh. from just a guy standing. And an emotionless room. blank face. Yeah. And that's difficult to pull off. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's one thing I absolutely loved about that. Uh, and with that being said, I don't think we've got too many changes to 2018. So nothing, nothing else. I nothing, don't think. No, the only the most drastic thing would be Sartain. Yeah, but he's easily removable. Absolutely, because he's pointless anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a busy. Get you, Barbara. Ever play in the cat? I want to look back!